on the Django based um, web game uh, that my friend Wiley is working on. Um, so last time we were working a little bit on the DevOps side of things and trying to set up a, uh, a precursor um, image that I'm calling Grotto Depths. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, the little thing I changed didn't work right. Hmm, yeah. So despite the documentation being pretty clear about how to use this thing, it didn't like it. It said no compatible package found for this thing. So I'm going to return to the former way that it was set up. Um, and I'm going to take this line and I'm going to put it into Grotto Depths requirements. This is the same one. Why are they both open there? Um, depth requirements. Put that in right here. Okay. And then we're going to take that mess out of the Docker file because it's not doing us any favors there. Docker file. It's not open. Okay, Docker file. Nope, not that one. Yes, Docker file. Okay, and we're going to just get rid of this because it doesn't need to be there. Um, and that should fix that. So let's. Um, Let's go ahead and um, get that up into Git. Okay, just the things I want to change. Git add uh, Git status. Ooh, didn't miss that. Uh, git commit m show stuff. push that and then we wait and we wait <clears throat> excuse me and we wait and we wait and we wait <clears throat> we wait some more um, I have some other stuff to work on too um, for this project so let's go back to our to-do list and Uh, let's look at our to-do list here, and we can see to the CI pipeline uh, for Grotto a little bit. We can deal with the proxy a little bit, but I want to have a good image in place. So if I want to do that, then I'll take the image that I've been using for dev that I built uh, last time, and I should just be able to push that up to Docker Hub and call that good. Um, so uh, for now, for now, um, for now let's work on the CI pipeline for Grotto proper. So we've already built out the infrastructure so that um, we can build a, con a, a container, but what we also need to do is to tell uh, GitLab to do so. So we'll follow the same exact pattern, I'm sorry, GitHub to do so, this is a GitHub project. Uh, so we'll follow the same pattern that we used uh, for uh, what was demonstrated to be functional, right? Like it, GitHub did the action, uh, so I, I trust that that works, and I trust that it would have uploaded if uh, this had been, if I had followed the pattern that was there originally. So let's replicate that in Grotto proper with a new file, uh, GitHub workflows. If you're a Sublime Text user, it works fine to create uh, files in new directories if you just call out all the directories along the way. 
Uh, so let's do a Docker Hub publish. And we're basically going to follow the same, like literally the same pattern that we did on the other. Let's open this Docker Hub publish Docker Deps. I'm just going to copy it all. Oh. Um, so Wiley said that he did not have his own Docker Hub username and password. Not a problem. Uh, I'll use mine on his repo um, and hope that the secrets are respected. Um, oh, geez. Oh, man. What is going on here? Okay. Um, assuming otherwise, I'll just make him get his own. Um, Right, so that the secrets in place in, oh, uh, that's not the right repo at all. This is the repo that we want. Let's see if I have, I don't actually have the ability to put settings in. So I don't think that I can Yeah, I don't think that I can do these actions this way. I would need to get the secrets into GitHub. So remember that here by going to settings and then secrets and without displaying them, it uh, lets you put them in. So I believe that I have to have more anyone with collaborator access to this repository can use these secrets for actions it doesn't say who can create them because I think I'm a collaborator here on uh, grotto Okay, so that puts a little bit of a damper on things. I can communicate to Wiley uh, to do that thing or to give me more more juju in the um, in the uh, repository. Actually, let me just ask him that now. Do do do. page let's see who oh I don't need all that I just need to know who has access oh, I, I guess I don't get to know who has access um, yeah so let me just ask Wiley So the other alternative to doing um, to doing it through GitHub here is to set up a parallel GitLab project for Grotto, and every time uh, Grotto is pushed to GitLab, we'll pull it and run the CI pipeline uh, over there. So I could do that and use my GitLab account to control that proxying um, 
that's an alternative. That's a more complicated alternative, and you know, I'm a, I'm an early contributor to the game, but I'm not necessarily going to be contributing to the game forever. Um, so I think uh, sort of keeping it uh, keeping it simpler is better. Uh, so we'll see if Wiley is able to give me the permissions that I need. In the meantime, since I'm sort of striking out on uh, a few things, um, let's let's go back and check on Grotto Depths and let's see how this thing is going. Details, some checks haven't completed yet. Of course, this is going to take... Let's see how long it actually ended up taking. 54 minutes and 35 seconds. That has got to be some kind of a record. Longest pipeline I've ever run. Um, OK, so today we'll come back and check on this in about 55 minutes. Um, no big, no big deal. Uh, okay, so what we were going to do instead is get Nginx set up so that we are actually uh, piping this thing out. So I built a container. Oh, geez, did I? Do I have a recent build of this thing? I think it's recent enough. Let's go. Let's go see. Uh, so. Docker compose build. Let's see. Oh boy, it can't do that. Uh, let's let's revert this to what it used to be. Uh, actually, here let's duplicate that. Let's change you Python three dot seven Alpine, and hopefully that. it so it's exactly identical to what it was before and see if that allows it to use the cache oh boy ah okay that's no good it's still gonna take like 50 minutes to do that um, all right well I have run myself into a hole on this one um, okay, so I, I, it won't work for me to use the existing image that I have because it, the, the existing image doesn't have G-Unicorn and it doesn't have the uh, requirements, uh, um, or rather, it doesn't have the uh, uh, entry point that I worked on last time. So I'm kind of uh, between a rock and a hard place vis-a-vis -vis, uh, having an image to run. I can start doing some setup on nginx but without having something to actually pipe through to you know without having something running on port 8000 it's going to be hard to see if nginx is is functioning correctly so um this is going to be a short stream today um Welcome viewer, sorry about the short stream today. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, I we could just sit here and have a chat about it. Um, uh, um, but apart from that, I'm just in a waiting game as I wait for either my container to build, which I'm looking at about 50 minutes of waiting for, sp for Spacey to build and all the other things, um, or I can wait for the dependencies container to build, which is likewise just stuck building Spacey. Um, I let's look at the other things that I could work on. I've already put what I can into the Grotto CI pipeline, just something to build the container and push it to Docker Hub. Uh, I guess I could fix that. And I cannot put the secret in place because I don't have the the uh, um, 
permissions required. And I don't have something running to fix that. I could dedupe visits. That's actually, yeah, let's do that real quick. Um, I uh, let's let's actually see to some uh, to to the repo stuff. So it looks like main got merged. Oh, okay, yeah. I bet that was just a pull kerfuffle. No big deal. Um, then let's get main oh I need to uh, stash and then I can pull a uh, checkout main and then I can unstash pop stash rather don't like it let's resolve oh <laughs> okay I'll keep all of this stuff thank you stage you and I won't push this until oh uh, well actually let's create a new branch more DevOps concerns yeah I won't push this until uh, until I know that this will work and this new Docker file that I put in place won't work until Oh wait, hang on. What the heck happened? Are you kidding me right now with this pickle? Read me and requirements. So let's unstage those. I still got that in the stash, so I'm going to discard it. Very confused right now by this commit. Okay, so that's why I'm gonna stay on the stream to be confused by a commit. Uh, okay, so main, I should be able to pull it now, hopefully. You overwritten by merge. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, well, no, 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 no. It's in the stash. It's in the stash. I can delete this, and it'll come back. No problem, because it's in the stash, and the stash doesn't, uh, the stash doesn't actually, it, like it doesn't drop, whenever you pop, unless it, if there are uh, merge conflicts. So because it hit a merge conflict, it didn't drop this stash, which means I can just ignore these changes basically, um, and I I can get them back if I delete them. Okay, so now I've pulled, I've got main caught up with origin. Um, I've got this stash that I should be able to pop now. It actually popped, that's good. Um, those are good things. And this is a good thing as well. So we're going to stage it and stage it. Cool, glad we got that sorted out. Um, okay, while we wait, while we're still waiting, uh, I can dedupe visits. Oh man, can you hear my computer going burr over there? Yeah, it's trying to build that image. It's a big one. Rip. Uh, anywho, uh, we were going to dedupe visits so the the notion there and let me start oh god I can't start it the 
Yes, I can. I should be able to just do compose up. And it'll use the existing image that it has. What? Oh, the port is already allocated. I have another thing running over here on another terminal. Uh, uh, let's shut her down. Um, make stop. Once that stops, I should be able to up this. And it'll use the, the existing image that it has that doesn't need to have G Unicorn or anything else. So let's give it a try. Cool, coming up. Coming up in the world. Oh, it looks like it does have the, this image does have the entry point. Interesting. It has the entry point. It doesn't have G-Unicorn, so it won't actually launch in a prod environment. But if I set it to a dev, then it would launch using run server, which should be fine for testing Nginx. So we could go to that step. Let's do this deduping first, though, now that I've already gotten my, my mind set on it. OK, so now we ought to be able to open up Grotto by going to localhost. Indeed. Man, I just love that. This dude jamming. He is so freaking jamming on that. Look at him go. It's like freaking Rush over here jamming out. Anyway. No characters yet. I th think I've got a mm, nice. Uh, I think I've got a what account am I even? Okay, this is the old one. This is the same one that I've been on. So I probably need to I probably need to log in as uh, as a other Paul maybe. Let's check it out. Go to. I have no characters. Maybe Paul two. This is my approach to development. Just use use just whatever. Enter Paul two. No characters yet. What happened to all my characters? This this is no good. Admin. Characters. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I just don't have any characters. Okay, right, right, right. Whenever I push my database, um, I'm guessing it's getting overwritten by Wiley's database. So pretty soon we're going to have separate databases entirely, which I am here for uh, because then it, it, I, it'll have a really consistent. Um, experience so let's uh, I'm logged in as a as a thing here let's do it let's speak to the crone um, oh I answered that really wrong uh, okay I like what he did with the styling here shuffles feet shuffles feet okay cool view character bugaboo I'm bugging you that's who that is unscripted content right there. You can clip that. Um, all right, enter the grotto. Here I am. An unknown blank was here. What happened to this? An unknown robot. I am here. Six days. In. So this is what he was talking about with the duplicate. Uh, I kind of want to troubleshoot and see what the where, how come there's no name here. Um, let's check that out first. Six days. How long ago? Six days. Come on. Why? 
wait, why does my visit? Oh, I haven't left yet. That's why my visit isn't there. I'm in the room. So it's the yellow, white, yellow kite faced room. I'm guessing that's the robot. So a little bit further back from that, we've got this thing. which doesn't have a character. How did that happen? How is there a visit with no care? Oh, is this a character got deleted situation? Uh, let's see if that's even possible. Models in character builders or visits is set null. Okay. Okay, so let's do some fixing there. Um, let's do some fixing there. If there's no character, oh well. Okay, let's let's dedupe first off. Uh, any, we'll only talk about the most recent visit from any character. So. How can we accomplish that? Uh, we are getting the we're getting the visits here and propagating them to the template in the where is it? Oh yeah, I'm looking in the wrong uh, wrong app. I should be looking in Map Builder. And I should be looking at views, right? Room detail view. So here we are. Hmm. Character. Let's look at the template. I don't know. The template there should be room. HTML. And in the so here's you are here uh, and anybody else who's here and then there is so this is from the room itself visit set all um, what we're gonna do here to deal with that is create a new we could we could we could try to finagle a query set into this template but what I'm thinking is that we just write a Write a little manager method to give us a new uh, a new query set method. That's a fun uh, exploration of Django's functionality as well. So, um, how do I explain that? Right. Let's look at the views model again, and I'll get rid of that over there. Um, we have our visit. In the template, let me put the template. Let me put the model over here on first screen, and let's look back at the template here on the second screen. So on the second uh, uh, column. So we're using this visit set. So first off, let's understand what we're even on about. Um, I'll pull up the. Let's make this three column. Actually, let's do it. Let's pull up the map builder models. So room is uh, is the object that we're talking about here. Is the type of the object that we're talking about. Um, so it does not have an attribute called visit set, right? That's the magic of Django. Um, by creating this foreign key right here to room. Uh, we are automatically getting a, a reverse accessor so that we can see um, what visits are associated with any given room from the room object. So visit set is automatically created based on the, the name of the model, uh, yeah, the name of the model and underscore set. Um, you can change this, and I'm gonna go ahead and change it. 
to, um, but or you can change it by setting a related name. So the related name that I'll set here is visits. And to accommodate that over here where I have visits set, I want to change it to visits. But I'm not just going to do it there. I'm going to look for it wherever it might be. And hopefully it's only in that, yeah, it's only in that one place. So it's safe to just change this to visits. Now, apart from that, we want to deal with these deduplicated visits. Um, and I don't want, hmm, excuse me, I don't want to lose, I don't want to like delete visits that are redundant, right? Because they're still, there's still maybe relevant data to the game at hand. Um, but I do want to limit which ones are visible. To exclude any, to exclude all but the most recent. Um, um, so I don't, let's look at the reverse related manager. Reverse relate. Oh. Reverse manager, no manager. Um, I wanted to say that there was a a such a thing as a reverse manager, a reverse related manager. There we go. Related manager. Cool. So the related manager lets you uh, lets you get access. Uh, do, do, do. Related manager manages you from one. It happens in two cases. The other side of a foreign key relation. Right, that's what I was describing before. Uh, both sides of a many to many. Add. And where is all in this? Okay, well, it's still a manager, so it probably inherits from. Let's actually find that. Let's do a little exploration here. Django. Um, where should I even be looking for that? Let's go get the class DB models fields related. It's pretty deep in there. DB models fields related. And we should see a somewhere around here. I'm about to subject myself to a control app. Let's do it. Re whoa. Related manager. No? What? What? Class related manager. Okay. Well, DB models fields. DB models fields related. Okay. Uh huh. Somebody playing a prank on me. Uh, 
Uh, okay, well, let's look for something else. Okay, it's not there. That's cool. Why? What? What is even happening right now? Oh, okay, they're well past where I'm at in the development. Okay, we're using 03x, so let's... That. I doubt they did that big of a refactor. Related man. Nope. Yeah, okay. Models fields related. Models fields related. Uh, oh, okay. From dot import field, there's no there's no import of this either. What is going on here? Very confused now. Let's look at managers, base manager, related manager. Made mention of here. We can't proxy this method to query set like we do for the. Ah, uh, okay. It's because query set all work. I'd love to. Where is it? <laughs> okay, let's let's try this Git. There's like a GitHub search thing that's supposed to be useful. Let's go. Let's. Oh, how do we even do it? Uh, is there a go to no go to definition? Here we go. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it. No, it's not in this file though. The princess is in another castle. Go to file. Nope. It's Models field related. That's where it's 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 purported to be. Related lookups. Reasonable assumption. A bunch of test stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's try here. Let's see what we got. Related. Nope, nothing there. All right, I'm resorting to I have a copy of it pulled. It's an old, old copy. Uh, don't matter to me, none, because it should get us close. Related manager. It's in related descriptors. I just sort of just look there. Didn't I? Isn't that what this is? Real, oh, related lookups. It's great. It's really good. <clears throat> Okay, okay, create reverse menu to one. Okay. Oh, all right. I see what's going on here. So they don't define related manager out in the wild, out somewhere else, because they want to be able to, they want to sort of have a factory for the related manager. 
so that every time you instantiate a field that has one of these, uh, or every time you instantiate a model that has one of these reverse relationships, it can create that that uh, um, visits set, for instance, um, sort of on the fly. Cool. So we're getting at the heart of the matter here. Um, so doing anything to, um, what, what this is to say is it's going to be really hard to overload related manager. Uh, I don't, I don't actually want to mess with it because it's, it's just as easy to do the query on the visits table if we're, if we sort of sort of get into it a little bit it's just as easy to um, collect up these visits without using the reverse related uh, it just involves a little bit more effort on the view side of things so over here in room detail view I want to do a def uh, get Just copy it up here. Save a little bit of typing. All right, so we've got the boilerplate in place. I should just make a macro for that or something. Um, actually, I'm going to make a note of that. That's a pretty good. Okay, um, pew, pew, pew. So for get context data, uh, we're trying to get the visits. So let's do context.update visits. And here we should be able to do something like visit dot object dot um, uh, uh, um, and then here's where we define our um, our own query set for for some meaningful query uh, and some widely used query. So um, unique recents. Actually, we might be able to do this with just a normal query set. I don't want to mess around with making a, a, a my own manager class if I can just get at this with a simple query set. So let's do a little more investigating on unique. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, no, it's not unique. In SQL language, it's distinct. Here we go. Here we go. So what I want to avoid here is getting an older Actually, I actually don't think we need to get into um, 
into anything too profound here. So let's filter. Um, actually, let's try it without even using visit the visit uh, um, model. Uh, we should already have. That should be something that that's already known. So we can use something similar, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we can use something similar to what we used over here and do object.visits.all and say object dot um, visits visits dot um, hmm. Can we though? No, we get into that same problem we were talking about before. So let's actually use visit. Visit dot objects dot uh, filter room equals self dot object. So that limits our limits the rows that we're going to return to to those that have the the same room that we're looking at right now. Um, and then we want to. Um, we want to order the records correctly. If I'm reading the documentation correctly, what they're what they what they're trying to tell you is that it's important that you order um, rather. No, no, that's about values. Sorry. Yeah, here we go. Um, when you specify field names, you must provide an order by in the query set, and the fields in order by must start. With the fields and distinct in the same order. Right. If you don't specify an order, you'll get some arbitrary row. So let's think about an example case where the robot visited five days 23 hours ago and it visited four days 23 hours ago and two days 23 hours ago. So um, what we would want there is the two days, the most recent one. But if we don't set the ordering before we call out the unwanted rows, before we get just the, 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 the single distinct one, then we may just get any of those visits. So it's not a, not a reliable record keeper. So then um, let's do that order by. I want to order it by the stamp date. So stamp eight and then distinct. Um, it says that it wants let's read that documentation again. Okay, because, oh shoot. Well, poo poo, we're not using Postgres. We're using SQLite. So these will not do what we expect them to do. It's fields in order to by the name of the fields. This translates to a select distinct on. Each row, when determining which rows are distinct. Okay. Each field in each row. Okay. So this is not this is uh, this is troublesome for us here. Um, there are a few ways to address this. Um, man, makes me wish that we were using Postgres. For our database here because that's pretty nice to be able to do um, hmm. uh, 
Uh, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get all of them. And again, this is like not optimized code, but it doesn't need to be. I just want it to run. So visits equals visit object order by stamp date. And then And then we can go over that list that's returned and deduplicate it ourselves on character. So uh, I'm going to just sort of make this uh, visits, and then we'll do deduped visits. For visit and visits. Um, yeah, for visit and visits, we will do uh, deduped. Let's do if. Visitors if visit dot visitor uh, dot uh, character not in visitors so if uh, change that logic if visit dot character is in visits visitors rather then we'll just continue dump out early um, otherwise we will put this visit into deduped visits deduped visits dot append visit and visitors will also get the character visit dot character so we're going to have two data structures, one with the characters that have visited and one with the visits that are represent that, that are uh, implied by that visitor. Um, if uh, um, if the character hasn't been seen as a visitor to this room, uh, then we will actually, you know, it's, it's actually not. Uh, let's change that logic around so it's not so confusing. If there was more stuff happening below that, then I would do the early dumping of continue. But there's only one check on this. It's a simple check. So if, if the visitor hasn't been logged, then log the visitor and the visit. Um, and here's our deduped. Visits. Let's fix the linting on that a little bit. And then let's fix this as well. Visits. Now that visits is in the um, context that uh, uh, that should work. So let's save that. And let's go over here. I don't even think the related name is being used now. This is not going to work because I don't have visit in there. But now it should work. Let's have a refresh. Cool. It left off that unknown whatever. But that's another thing to think about. That deleted character that had the visit set none. Um, That's a that's a sort of problematic thing. Um, that mm, well, uh, I don't think there's a way to de to delete a character right now for the user. 
So it's not a practical problem that we should face, but it's kind of a, a an interesting um, it's kind of an interesting problem to think about. So first of all, the deduping is going to e it's going to consolidate any of those unknown visitors, any of those null visitors down into a single visit, which is a little troublesome. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, the, the, the deleted character, we'll think of it as an edge case that uh, uh, shouldn't come up too much. I think once you've entered the, the grotto, you maybe you don't get deleted. It was just a sort of constraint we put on ourselves as, as managers of the game. Uh, okay, so let's just fix the template up so that it's not quite so... Uh, so bizarre, like the language here, and unknown was here. Uh, it just doesn't quite fit. So something strange was here is what we'll go for. Now that is if visitor is character. Um, else if elif visit dot character equals none. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, let's go over here. Django template compare none. Okay, that that works then. Equals equals none. Oh, I like this better. Yeah. If not, it's more. I hate that. Editor moves this thing around because it thinks it's smarter than I am. But you think you're better than me? Uh, so let's do this and unknown. Something strange was here. So that might make it a little bit prettier. Cool. And I want to make that read a little bit better. Um, that kind lower. Cool. Yeah, we can do a little filter on that uh, on that value and set it to lowercase. Cool. Okay, so that dealt with a little bit of stuff that we had over here in deduping. Um, let's have a look at our build progress. My computer is still going burr, so I think, uh, yeah, it's still building for sure. Uh, let's check on it over here, see if GitHub is any faster. Whoa, hold up, hold up. Are you kidding me right now, man? I love it. Oh, wait, is it done? It has a check mark. Let's go back and see. Exciting. Check marks. You can't see, but I just dropped confetti in here. It's very festive. Um, so let's check Docker Hub. And let's see what we know about it. Bingo, bingo, bango, bongo. Uh, so every time we push on this thing, we're gonna want to update that uh, that version number. That's kind of an annoyance, um, but you know we'll deal with that. We'll keep dealing with that. For now, we shouldn't have to change it very often. 
Uh, excuse me one moment. I'm going to go to the restroom. Let me put this on. Let me put this on fully so you can enjoy it. Okay, and we're back. Um, thank you for sticking around during my little potty break there. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, we were celebrating because Grotto Depths done got built, which means I don't actually need to keep building all this mess. Nah, -uh. all that you know, I don't want to go in any deeper on uh, that wasted time. My computer can calm down, bring its load average down a little bit. Let's check it. Yeah, you're talking big load. Big. This isn't even pushing to, to, to Twitch right now. That's being done on my desktop machine. So a uh, little lappy here. It's four cores, so this is only you know half what it can theoretically handle. Um, but man, whew, calm down. You just relax and you can just catch your breath for a minute. Looking better. Okay. Anywho, uh, let's bump it back up again here and let's uh, let's fix back. I knew it was a mistake to do that. Let's fix this back to the way it was. Uh, I don't think I messed with anything else. Let's check the commits and be sure about that. Oh, I got a lot of stuff going now. Yeah, I didn't mess with the requirements that was already staged. Pew, pew, pew. All right. So now whenever we build it, it ought to be able to pull that existing image that already had all of the burring done on it by the apparently fast servers at github once we pull this it should be able to build the rest of the the rest of the image uh, really quite quickly there's not a whole lot to do the requirements are already in place it's going to check them all already satisfied Perfect, and then we're going to put the app in place and create the user and expose ourselves, and uh, there we go. So that entry point in place, if I hit Docker Compose up, actually, I think, oh yeah, I don't know why I haven't been using that. Dumb. Uh, okay, let's run it. We'll just make run. And up we go. Oh, it's recreating it because I already had it created over here. I'm going to exit that. And hope that I didn't break everything by doing. Okay, we're good. So we're running on the new container. Oh, what a relief. Oh, what a relief it is. Okay, so I'm going to check that off. Independent repo here. Bam. Gone. Uh, Docker Hub registry. I've already made that. Now we need to do the CI pipeline. I need to get Wiley 
Oh, cool. Get permission. Uh, no, it's uh, GitHub permissions. Asking me what to put in there, and it's like, well, my password, bruv. What you even? What are we doing here? Um, See, he may have just made me a bigger, badder dude than I was before. Let me just refresh. Um, oh, no, it's my password. All right, we're going to go to Dr. Hub and see about making a, a, a token, making a dang old deploy token. Uh, my profile. Oh, would you look at that? Ten downloads. That's a lot. That's more than I expected. Uh, my content account settings. Let's see what's under there. Security. Oh yeah, that's my username again. Don't wear it out. Yeah, the Gravatar thing, still annoyed by that. Um, security, access tokens, beautiful. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so I'm gonna bop this over to another screen so that you guys can't see my access token. And, and let's do it. Access token description. CI pipeline. Grotto, I'm just going to call it Grotto CI. Create it. All right, I'm going to send that over to Wiley. Um, I need two secrets. I'm hoping that mic muted before I sneezed because that was a big sneeze. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so what were the secrets that I needed to create even called? Well, I don't know. How am I supposed to know that? That's not my job. There we go. So hopefully those secrets get put in place soon enough and I can um, and I can push these changes and see something happen. 
Mm -mm 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 -mm. Cool. Let me put... All right, Wiley says that's done. That was fast. Fast service with a smile. Uh, okay, so you can see I've created that. It'll only ever show you the access token once. So if you go through creating that access token, be sure that you uh, have put it where it needs to be before you close that window out or you'll be creating a new access token. Fortunately, you can delete access tokens whenever you want. Um, and then that's the reason why I'm using it here. I'm giving it to Wiley. I should learn that the repo got uh, hacked or that you know it's somehow being abused then I can uh, revoke access and it won't be harmful to me personally. Like they won't have access to my account um, broadly, for very long at least, hopefully. So anyway, um, now that that is in place, I should be able, and let's go through all the rigmarole here, I should be able to just publish this thing directly to Docker Hub. Uh, actually, let me go and make sure that I created the repository for Docker Hub or for uh, on Docker Hub. Uh, let's call it Grotto. Grotto. Fun game for friends. I'm using one of zero private repositories. I don't need it anymore. I'm using zero of them. Oh, I said that backward. I'm using zero of one. Okay, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, create it. Cool, it exists now. I should be able to push. I want to get, I should get, oh man. I should get the salt and pepper song. Uh, 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 uh. Anytime I do a push, I should get that going as a, some flair for the channel. What do you think, viewer? Is that a good idea? Hit me in the chat, let me know. Ah, push it. Push it real good. Oh, I was supposed to review that before I staged it. Okay, that's just changing. That's good. And then uh, models, giving it a related name that I'm actually not even using anymore. So I'm going to discard that change because it's not necessary. Um, that appears to work the way we hope it would. So I'm going to call it good. And this likewise appears right. So let's do a... Uh, oh, 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 hold up, hold up, be careful here. Yeah, I want to be sure that I'm not triggering this all the time. I want this for pushes to the main branch only. Right, that's a good catch. So let's go back to actions and uh, let's click on this and there was documentation um, let's click new workflow oh god my god okay let's do it come on all right documentation that's what I want to see on pushes branches bingo <laughs> give me that on push branches cool so that makes it a little bit safer uh, it's not gonna push a new image for anybody who can make a branch in the repo um, so once Wiley merges this thing, then it'll do that first push. Uh, what? Wait, how?
Well, I don't know. We're going to find out, I guess. That'll either get updated or it won't. I don't know. I just don't know. Um, and it, I don't... Actually, I don't care that much about the version being incremented over time. Again, because it's a casual game for friends. <clears throat> so I'm just going to leave that alone. Um... And let's finish up our code review here. And that's why you do code review, honestly. Uh, so that you can... Whoa. Oh, because I put it in the wrong spot. And that's why you... Just, that's still why you do code review. Uh, Docker Hub Publish. Okay. Um, perfect. So that looks what I that looks what I like what I want it to look like. Stage it. Perfect. Um, maybe ready. Who could say? Let's let's do it. And, uh, oh man, did I really commit that to main? Are you kidding me right now? All right, I want to, okay. <laughs> right, I wanna go to more DevOps concerns. I want to, cherry pick this did he put the SQLite database back in to the thing oh boy um, right I want to cherry pick this commit What? Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Okay. Forget I did that at all. Uh, let's abort cherry pick. Uh, okay, so this more DevOps concerns is, is a bad branch. I'm going to delete this branch. I'm deleting it. Oh, I can't delete it because I'm in it. I'm going to go to main again. I'm going to delete... More DevOps concerns. I'm going to check out DevOps concerns. I'm going to branch from that. More DevOps concerns. Beautiful. And then I'm going to cherry pick. Beautiful. Perfect. That's great. And then, um, I want to delete this commit. Drop selected commits. Only commits reachable from head. Okay. That's fine. Let's check out main. And then I want to delete drop good okay so that's what we have at origin uh, that's what I wanted to make it in a new branch to begin with because that's the better thing to do I don't want to commit to main because it's not my role to commit to main um, I'll let Wiley do the review on that and he can commit to main um, right so I had to do a little tap dancing there to sort that out and fix that. No problem. Uh, let me push that. Mm, okay, so it's pushed. I'll let Wiley know. about that. I have an image right now 
this one that I just finished building that I could upload. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, well, hang on, let's do Docker build help. Uh, I want to put a tag on it. I want so we'll do Docker build T. Um, this matters auto latest. satisfied that's awesome and then with that tag all right rather I should be able to just push that tag directly let's find docker hub again docker push bango so once that's done building I will push and that should go up there This now should have the latest. Perfect. Very good. Now, um, <clears throat> that is so that's going to check off a few things. CI pipeline. Well, we'll hopefully get that checked off. I need to chat with Wiley and let him know. Um, okay, I pushed a new branch with the last bit. DevOps stuff. Um, registry is done we'll check that off once uh, Wiley does the push uh, deploy to digital ocean that's ongoing um, right so I should be able to do SSH grotto prod and that'll take me straight over to that droplet where I am root then um, Did I, I think I already installed Nginx. Um, CTL status Nginx. It's running. Cool. Um, got normal stuff in Nginx. Um, How do you use Nginx though? Um, is there nothing in there? Not a thing. And then let's also check sites available. Default, let's see what default says. Alright, big example thing, normal. Alright, I haven't uh, messed with one of these in a minute. Um, I'm sure I have some boilerplates somewhere. Um, Yes. Yes, I believe I do. Something that should get us close at least. Um, 
All right, let's start composing the sites available. rather a, a, an nginx config for our for our little site thing here um, I'm gonna need a new window and I'm gonna open up a project that's that's uh, that has one of these um, nginx configs just so I can snatch it out without having to write the whole thing from scratch reading the documentation um, why aren't you moving? there we go um, <laughs> That's what Nginx proxy is about. Okay. Cool. I'm not going to stand up my own Nginx. Since we have Docker, um, oh man. Yeah, it's gonna have to deal with certs and all that crap if we do SSL. Okay, no SSL for now. We don't need it. We can get more complicated as we go. So let's just look at the documentation. Uh, so the reason I'm uh, sort of calling in, calling it a no good here, is that uh, um, Uh, the the thing the config I was going to reference uh, isn't it, it's using a prepackaged nginx proxy um, and it's tailor tailor fit for the um, deployment model for that project and I don't feel like uh, coercing it into a different form so leaving that alone um, let's go look at an nginx config. Nginx. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna keep the the boilerplate that they give. If it's here, then it's probably worth using, huh? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, Nginx proxy. That we get we get a lot of stuff apparently multiple partner Oh, okay, are they, wait, what? Do they have their own Nginx? Okay, yeah, they're just starting it up with Docker Compose. No big. Um, Actually, I love this pattern. Yeah, I, I like this pattern a lot. Um, it doesn't quite work with our deployment, um, but it should be fine repeatability wise. 
let's let's do that. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna vim. I'm gonna vim Docker compose. We can uh, nginx make a new service here. going to build this is our um, proxy uh, I think I need to do yeah dot slash proxy one thing um, we call it nginx keep it simple uh, ports Actually won't need this port anymore. I am going to need to have a network. Networks. Uh, yeah, it has to be a list. Let's have a look back at what this guy says. It depends on our other thing. Ports. They're more verbose with the ports. That's let's go with that. same screen. Why not? Depends on app. And I don't actually think I need to do a docker uh, do a docker file at all I think I can use the stock image um, yeah so let's um, image nginx despising this auto indentation that Vim is doing. Why are you doing this, this to me, Vim? I thought we were bro. Okay, and then down here, we're gonna just put the volumes in place that we care about. So, volumes. I can just put that one file where I need it to be. Since I'm doing a, basically a vanilla Django server thing. I'm not doing any uh, collected um, uh, uh, static files or any, anything like that. I'm just going to pump this one nginx.conf file into, um, into place. So volumes here, let's get our syntax right, dot slash nginx in is going to go to the spot they say up here. Etsy engine x engine x dot com. 
<clears throat> excuse me. And we're going to call that good. I'm going to make a directory here. Oh, tree is not installed. Okay. So cd into nginx. And I'll start working on a new file called nginx.com. <clears throat> and I'm going to just use most of this. I'm going to put it into sublime text first so that we can edit a little bit easier. Server is not Django here. It's the name of the, oh God. It's the name of the, uh, um, I'm going to pull up this. It's the name of the service in Docker Compose. It's not the same service that we're thinking about here. Uh, let me get out of this. put this in the same put this in the same network so that they can speak to each other and upstream app app proxy to app does the needful here I don't need this location at all char set is probably fine so this all goes into the placeholder file that I have in the nginx folder here nginx.conf all right Okay, so with that in mind, we don't need Nginx installed on the operating system anymore. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to do apt remove Nginx. Should free up some space, and that's excellent. Cool. And now, If we let me check that Docker Compose one more time. It's Mathers Grotto latest. Cool. It's going to create that database. Let's. I can do this. Do this a little bit better here. I'm going to make DB a directory. Nictor DB. Eventually, we should see this thing come up at the IP address of the server. Hopefully. Hi. See if that works. Oh, 5,000. What are you even on about? 5,000. That's ridiculous. Who even uses 5,000? This is Django we're talking about, right? Oh, okay, it doesn't like that. It's complaining here because I am trying to map 
trying to map a, a non-existent file, and it doesn't it doesn't like it. Let's uh, look at that Docker Compose again. It doesn't like that db.sqlite doesn't exist. It wants something there. Uh, nginx.conf is there and works fine, so that shouldn't be a problem. But we do need to fix nginx. nginx.conf to point to the right. Point to the right thing. And then. stuff the let's create that file as well touch db db.sqlite 3 that shouldn't affect anything uh whoa it may affect a thing may affect a thing because I I'm root and the container is not running as root so having this this root owned file is troublesome for it but if I make it if I chone it, um, what? What in the what? So um, I had that file misnamed, so that created a direct, and, and it didn't know that it was a file, so it created a directory um, with the wrong name. So rmdir db dot sqlite. Good. Now let's chone this chone. So Wiley happens to be 1,000, not a problem. Uh, 1,000 is the user number that is in use in the container. So if this file is owned by 1,000, then it ought to do the needful. It ought to be available for read and write. Um, excellent. Let's try bringing this thing back up again. I'm getting some questions from Wiley here. He's asking if he can run the server in the way that he used to. Um, So yeah, he's asking how his dev setup can work. Um, does it 
have to change because we went to a Docker deployment setup? And the answer is no. He can still use virtual env or just naked Python on his machine. Um, he just has to to run to do uh, manage run server from the source directory because we moved where that uh, dot slash or where that manage.py exists. All right, so we've got db.sqlite created. That's what it was complaining about before. So let's do a docker compose up. I'm not going to disconnect for now. I'm going to see whatever stuff happens. Oh, there's no. Well, this is embarrassing. I don't know why this command is freaking out on me right now. Not giving me control back. second and check my chats. <coughs> okay, so let this be a lesson to you. Don't run Docker Compose up in a directory that doesn't have a Docker Compose file. Or weird, weird stuff will happen that might just cause you to close your tab. Grotto prod. All right, so here we are. I'm going to go to prod. And I'm going to go uh, Docker Compose up. And that looks better. Whoa, still doesn't like it. already in use why what's in use there I thought I did I not have I slept uh, p grep nginx oh we do have nginx running hold on hold on family why is it running yes P-Rex. hmm Yesterday. Okay, so it must just be system CTL stop nginx disable nginx. Cool. Um, now let's try Docker Compose up for the last time. Unable to create the dwit. Attempt to write to a read only database. Okay, so it can't read the database. No problem. Nginx executable. What? Oof. No events section in configuration. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. For now, let's deal with the. Uh, file ownership thing. I get operational error slash this is Wiley chatting with me again. Alright, 
what was we talking about? Right. Let's do a little. Let's do a little messing around here. Let's figure out what. Uh, let's figure out what's going on with this. I'm gonna start this, but detach from it. Nginx will will fail in a moment. Um, and if I use the shell command that I created yesterday, make shell, it brings me right into what? Oh, you but apt install. Oh, I don't have that here. Poop. I have it here though. Uh, Doctor compose exec. Shh. That should have a a name in there as well. Let's fix that. Um, Docker compose exec app sh takes me into the container, hopefully. Or it does nothing. Cool. Why does this keep happening? Okay, that's getting bothersome. What is happening right now? Okay, I'm not sure why Docker Compose is being a butt right now. We'll figure it out. One second. Just getting a text from Bernie. No big deal. Love you too, Bernie. Uh, oh, why, 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 why is Dr. Compose doing this to me specifically? Uh, okay, I think I have an idea about what's going on here. And it all fundamentally stems from being root. Okay, so actually I don't have an idea of why Dr. Compose is doing what it's doing. I have no freaking idea about that. Um, 
what I do think I understand is the um, is what's going on with the permissions problem in the database. So Um, the issue is, well, no, it should be able to get into that directory. It still has execute privileges for anybody else. It's not right privilege. The folder doesn't need write privileges for the file to have write pri privileges. He has read write. Okay. Um, Exec, run a command in a running container. Cool. Docker exec Every time I use Docker I do this sort of chaining through of things. Uh, let's go IT. Let's go with the container called U. And the command is sh. Okay. LS AL. Oh, what? What? That's not right. Why is that doing that? I'm user worker. Oh, all of this stuff is owned by root. That's that shouldn't be a problem. I'm user worker. I have read and I have write because I'm the owner of that. Who am I? I'm worker. So what gives? Okay, we're gonna fix this thing up a little bit more. Um, so fundamentally, I think the root of the problem is that there is, is that there is this placeholder file called db SQLite3, and it doesn't like it. I don't like it one little bitty bit. So we need to do some changes to the app to address this. Uh, specifically here, I want to put another folder in. DB, right there. Um, and then I want to fix the Docker. Oh, not in here though. Uh, cd dot dot vim docker compose dot yaml. I want to fix you to put this in another layer of folder, and I don't actually want to do that at all. And then let's kill Docker kill PSA here. Okay, everything's exited. We're good. Um, now in prod, I'm gonna do this the right way and say Docker compose p prod up tack d. Awesome. And then let's do logs. 
Beautiful. No migrations to apply, though. What? There absolutely ought to be migrations to apply. Oh, it's using the old image. Yeah, that's the problem here. Uh, so I've made changes. We can see them in here. Oh, uh, yeah, the settings. There they are. So I'm going to go ahead and build a new one. Oh, man. Eat my shorts. Let's see if I have it in my history right here. Yeah, love it. Um, so I'll build this thing, give it the tag latest, and then I'm going to push that up to Docker Hub again. And then over here, I will do um, Docker Compose Prod Pull. Should pull a new image because I just pushed an image. Or Docker Compose will freak out and not do jack. Love it. I. What is going on? Why is Docker Compose doing this? Uh, Docker Compose freezing, hanging, halting. Are you kidding me right now? Dr. Compose, why are you hanging? I want it down. Ugh. It's filthy. wits end about this I don't know what the deal is with Docker Compose here but it is hanging okay let's Hanging on version. Is 
what is possibly wrong here. It's really annoying me. Oh, hey, something happened. Is this because there's some screwy version of Python somewhere? Oh, hey, it worked that time. Cool. I'll take it. Docker compose version. One dot twenty eight dot five. One dot twenty eight dot five. Okay, cool. Has random crashes. Hate it. Um, okay, so let's Docker compose. You know what? I'm gonna screen, screen, fn Docker. Okay. Now, if I see the prod, I should be able to Docker compose. Goodness, it actually did it. <clears throat> Docker compose p prod up. And since I'm in a screen, I'll just let it just let it all blop on out there. Uh again. Okay. Um, where are we going wrong here? Well, it's definitely on this. Let's see. Ella, uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, oh. Yeah, let's do prod up with attack D, and then let's do Docker. H L S S A L. It's owned by root. Oh, did I? Yeah, I did. I totally forgot to do that. Okay, let's D out of here. Uh, let's down this thing okay this thing works fine in the screen it's docker compose that is so it must be something wrong with like the connection to the to the tty or something on direct ssh so that's fine um let's blah 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 blah, 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 blah. right i need to rm db db.sqlite Let's bring this thing back up again. Uh, unable to open database file. It, why didn't it create it? Because it doesn't have write privileges in that directory.
<sighs> okay. Uh, so CD actually LS Spatel uh, Chone. This time. Hey, look at that. Very exciting. We got the migrations that should have been run, did run. Um, there is still a uh, database in, in the container. It shipped with it. It's the dev database. That shouldn't be there in the future. Um, because it won't be in the repo, and the re the uh, uh, can image is built from the repo by the CI pipeline. Um, now we need to fix the engine X. No events section and configuration. What the heck does that mean? Um, and well, what? Let's just go look at the Nginx page on Docker Hub. How to use this image. Huh. Complex configuration. That's what we're doing. So I think that it's probably a flawed approach to inject all of um, all of nginx conf because there's obviously something that's missing there. So let's do. Excuse me. Mm. Who's yawn there? Right, so if we are looking at the uh, uh, Dr. Compose here, rather than sending all of nginx.conf. What if we did instead a um, rado.conf and put this into sites enabled? Rado.conf. Um, that's probably a more standard approach to this. Let's see if this dude gets to the same conclusion later on, or if he 
Thanks to Tuku. He should have linked it. Come on. Um, okay. Let's back off on you. Back off on you. Don't need you either, or you. All you go away. Beep, beep, beep. Breakdown of how Nginx is configured with Django. Let's look at this next. Oh, yeah. This is what I'm talking about right here. <clears throat> so we'll take this and we will clean it up a little bit, make it right for us. Listening on 80, server name for now. Uh, I don't think we have one. Um, I guess I'll use the IP address. Let's go back again one more time. Okay, let's give it a try. Uh, no, it's not yet. After 8,000. Now let's give it a try. I shouldn't have a trailing slash on either of these. We don't need static files. Don't want to save it either. Oh, wow. Okay, control all. Let's copy it this time. And then let's do them. Um, rado.conf. Cool. This will maybe be better. Let's check it out. We still on that screen? Yeah, we are. All right. Um, let's do the up again. Let's see what the logs say. Logs have been complaining about it. Ready for startup. Awesome. Cool. Everything looks good right now. I want to see if we get something better over here. Hmm. Hmm. Did I put that in the right spot? Should be at sites enabled, right? Gotta get it right. Okay, the, the um, requests are coming through. That's good. So it's the right Nginx that we're seeing at least. Um, I'm gonna detach from this. And we can play around with the files a little bit. Uh, let's see. Prod. Index. Um, Docker compose. Is it not supposed to have a conf on there? I think it would read a conf. Okay, let's get back into the container. Um, there we are. Uh, 
let's kill it. kill it. I want it to be running. I want to be able to exec into it though. So let's up it with a detach. Docker compose p prod exec at no nginx shell. ls minus al oh ls minus al root uh, etsy etsy in Engine X. Does it not even have a sites enabled in there? Huh. Okay. Let's read Engine X doc. Mm, old shell. Okay, default.conf exists. So I just need to get rid of conf.d altogether. That's a quick fix. Let's get out of this. Let's vim docker compose. And we're just going to pipe all of nginx into Then we can down this thing. Oh my God, did I do it outside of the, I did it outside of the container. Oh no, I did do it inside the container, inside the screen, what? all day. This is getting really bothersome. Docker kill 
at least the hard way. All right, you're down now. Docker compose p prod up. Hey, bad request. How about that? How you like me now? well not very well at all so are the foibles of nginx uh, okay so that just means that our conf is bad almost certainly means that our conf is bad I will bring this thing down I should so connecting or rather Staying detached means that I can't bring it down with Docker Compose because Docker Compose down doesn't work right now for some reason that I can't define. Um, um, what was we talking about? Right, I was going to bring this thing up, but detached. And then I was going to exec compose p prod exec app shell, uh, not app, nginx. And let's ls etc x again a Prado is there it didn't give any complaints about it but it's not working either hmm Detach from it. Um, <laughs> Let me ask if he's set up DNS. Green. Um, <laughs> awesome. Killed my screen somehow. Docker compose. A surprise 
freaking jerk docker psa This doesn't work. I'll stop fumbling in the dark and I'll uh, try something else. Oh, it's still starting. Okay. Maybe it's just slow. Maybe Docker Compose just takes some time to do the thing. Okay, still doesn't like the request. So there's something clearly wrong with our with our very simplistic. Um, are very simplistic uh, forwarding here. We are. Wait, what is server name supposed to even be? Uh, I want to say that's like the DNS name. What it ought to look like. What does our settings say? Well, that would be giving us a 500 if it didn't like that. But our allowed host is empty. Let's put in a star. So if a loud host isn't right, then things can freak out a little bit. Uh, usually that gives a 500 error because the because Django rejects the incoming request. Uh, it's not a 400 error where what you would see from uh, uh, from Nginx rejecting it. All right, push the new one. Let's uh, let's see if Docker Compose Pull works for us this time. Let's roll the dice. Compose Pull. It's pulling. Awesome. And then we should be able to do up again, and that will recreate with the new image. I don't think this will make a difference. But we can check and see anyway. Server error this time. Well, that's a different thing. I like that more. Let's see the logs. Logs app. No logs there. Let's see the logs from Nginx. Foo, foo, foo. Okay. Let's see. 
let's just see here. Okay. Um, thing not found. Cool. Uh, how in the hell? Poo-poo. love that server error, but I don't know how to troubleshoot it any further. Um, let me... Actually, I do. Here, let's back this thing up a little bit. Let's get out of there. Um, and let's vim docker compose. Let's change debug to true. We haven't even started dealing with um, secret key or anything fun like that, which we will get to. Um, so with debug true, we should be able to see. We should be able to see what the error is instead of just getting the 500 return hopefully all right easy permission denied static cache Okay, I think I can fix this. Um, here in the Docker file. Here in the Docker file, after we put the app in place, we should be able to do a few housekeeping things. Run. Actually, you know what? Let's do this so that everything is owned by the right user. Um, and let's do. Uh, let's do a Python manage.py compile scss. Why are you pink? What's going on? All right, let's do the build again. It's gonna take a little bit longer this time. Permission denied? Are you kidding me right now? That's fine. That's believable, I believe it. I don't think you're kidding me right now. Don't, no, I didn't compile a C. I meant compile a CSS. Is he not using? What? Huh. Well, 
let's see if this fixes it. We've been just putting the user up higher will give us the right uh, uh, um, it, before we copy source into place. That'll give us the right, uh, hopefully the right permissions for everything to work correctly. So, um, didn't like collect, what? Oh, what a jerk. Okay, we pushed that. Let's pull. pull. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, pull it up. Wiley's trying to uh, find a domain name for the game whenever it's ready to go up. And Grotto, of course, is taken. And GrottoGame.com is taken. Grotto.app is taken. It's a Wumpus style game, so like Wumpus.app was a is a, is available, but it's it's kind of far from you know what the game actually is. Uh, so I suggested Grotto the Wumpus Game dot xxx. I think it's a good URL. What do you think? viewer no thoughts for the viewer freaking oh I'm not in a I'm not in a uh, a screen right now Let's start up a new one Searching to Grotto Pro. Actually, there is. Oh, I was in a screen. How about that? Cool. Easy peasy. Ridiculous. <clears throat> Running, so let's docker compose prod uh, up. recreating. I don't even remember what I changed just now. Oh, right, we were just changing the order in which the container is built in the hopes. Still, uh, let me see here. So something is a foot. Something is a foul, really. Um, the compress library is the libsass thing. But it is causing a breakage. 
because of that. Static cache CSS main. I don't. I think that 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 must be being created independently after runtime or during runtime. So prod exec app. Let's see what's going on in there. Command line worker, good. Uh, LSAL, all that stuff is owned by worker again. If I go into the file path static cache, cache is there. Okay, it's all there. Why is it being created as root, though? I wonder. Are these things. Oh, these things are being put there by me. Those are in the image. Okay. Yeah, those are, that's on me. I bet bottom dollar that those are the same exact ones that are here. Static cache CSS. Yeah, look at that. 3393BD. 3393BD. Okay. So. The fix here is to prevent those from being uh, put into prevent those from being put into the image, right? So that it doesn't ship with this static cache of CSS things, and that that will cause it to be built a new. Um, in the running image. At least that's my thinking here. So the easiest way to affect that is probably just to put them into a Docker ignore. So if I'm here at this level and I uh, create a file called uh, dot docker ignore, then I should be able to use uh, So let's just do star star cache. Let me save that. And now if I build it, it should build it, it should exclude that one folder. Push it. Push it real good. Ah. Then we'll pull. I'm in a container here. Let's exit that. And then let's do the pull thing. Pull it. And watch it freeze. I'm going to let that run. Dang it. No, I'm not. Friggin good. Become a 
developer, they said. It'll be fun, they said. It's great when Docker Compose works. All right, community, if you see anything I'm doing wrong here, holler in the chat, because something ain't right. Makes you want to throw a keyboard out a window, doesn't it? Or maybe through a window. pulling uh, but I have someone ring in the doorbell I'm gonna go answer that everybody sit tight I'm gonna try another up the here So everything's up to date now. Let's see if this fixes our issue. No, doesn't. Still permission denied. Uh, okay, so what that's telling me here is that the copy of this stuff is not happening as worker, running as worker, but that's not actually useful. Okay, we're gonna create the user after that. Let's do a run shown worker worker. Recursively. What a bum. Okay, it's capital R. It's built. Let's push it. again if it'll let us hey it did it twice in a row look at that and then product D recreate that thing there bad gateway hey 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 okay we got to work with static files a little bit no problem. We'll deal with that next time. We got something up on the interwebs, though. Um, uh, 
we can see we can see what's going on with that later. So thank you for joining today. Uh, got a little bit done on the deployment side. Have something up on the interwebs. Um, we have a, a way to move forward from here. So some things to work on will be um, static files and then a more uh, robust way to um, handle SCSS better. So ideally, I'd like to compile SCSS um, so that it is a, a CSS bundle proper, and then let white noise for static files handle that. So I'll probably probably be back tomorrow to do another few hours on uh, getting this thing deployment ready, making it a little bit cleaner without going overboard on uh, on DevOps. So thank you for joining, and uh, have a good rest of your day.